I would like to talk about minimally invasive lumbar interbody fusion surgery using biportal endoscopy. The endoscopic spine surgery is the most minimally invasive surgical method. And endoscopic lumbar interbody fusion surgeries are able to minimize the damage to the patient's normal structures. Endoscopic Spine surgery can help the patient to recover quickly and help patient return to society or return to work faster than the conventional fusion surgeries. Firstly, I introduce the surgical case of biportal endoscopic TLIF. A 56 year old female patient complained of lower extremity radiology and claudication. The main symptom of this patient was radicular pain of right leg. On preoperative x-ray and MRI, degenerative spondylolisthesis was seen in the lumbar spine 4, 5 level. Axial MRI image reveals severe central stenosis at L4, 5 area. Since this patient was accompanied by anterior spondylolisthesis and spinal canal stenosis, I decided to perform lumbar fusion surgery. The surgery I decided was TLIF using biportal endoscopy. I did right-sided biportal endoscopic TLIF. This minimally invasion fusion surgery is performed using two channels. For this operation, two skin incisions are made first. The two skin incisions are made above the pedicle. These skin incisions are used again as a pedicle screw insertion points after a cage insertion. Overview of making two portals under the C-arm fluoroscopy guide. Serial dilators are used to minimize muscle damage. The dominant hand is mainly used for the working portal, and the non-dominant hand uses the endoscopic portal. This is the endoscopic surgery video. Initially, the spinous process base, lamina, and facet joint capsules are exposed using radiofrequency probes. Laminotomy is performed using an endoscopic drill and kerosene punches. The inferior articular process is removed from the right facet joint. At this time, I use a drill and micro-osteotomy. I usually remove the thickened yellow ligament after fully exposing from proximal end to distal end of the yellow ligament. Ipsilateral traversing nerve root is completely decompressed, and disc space is widely exposed. Then I dissect and separate the yellow ligament from contralateral sublaminal area. I remove the contralateral yellow ligament to completely expose and decompress the contralateral traversing nerve root. The annulus is incised by a blunt knife. I do disectomy. If we use biportal endoscopic approach, we can separate cartilaginous end plate from osseous end plate, and cartilaginous end plate is able to be removed without osseous end plate injury. This is the final view of end plate preparation using an endoscopy. Finally, I put in a large long TLIF cage into disk space. A cage is reposited obliquely or transversely. Central canal and bilateral nerve roots are completely decompressed. 
postoperative X-ray shows well reduction of spondylolisthesis of L45. Also, postoperative MRI demonstrates well reduction of spondylolisthesis and complete decompression of central canal. And you can see the complete central canal decompression after surgery. First, the surgical view or surgical anatomy of bipolar endoscopic spine surgery is very similar to the conventional open surgery. Therefore, endoscopic view is familiar to the spine surgeons. The second point is uh, this bipolar endoscopic approach can perform fully neural decompression like MIS clip or conventional clip. I usually did laminectomy, facetectomy, and complete discectomy using bipotal endoscopic system. Third advantage is the endoscopic end plate preparation. End plate preparation is very important procedure for fusion. Injury of osseous end plate may lead to subsidence of KG and fusion failure. If we use the bipotal endoscopic approach, cartilaginous end plate can be completely removed from osseous end plate under clear view of endoscopy. I believe endoscopic end plate preparation prevents the end plate injury and cage subsidence. Although endoscopic spine surgeries have many benefits or advantages for patients as well as surgeons, the technique of endoscopic spine surgery is very difficult. Before starting endoscopic fusion surgery, you must have a lot of experience in basic endoscopic spine surgery.